Welcome to WKRP Montrose, a radio station masquerading as a podcast about Montrose, Colorado and the Western Slope. I'm I'm really nervous about starting this episode now. You, you should be. <laughs> is it recording? It is recording. Okay, do your thing where you say another episode of whatever. Pretend. I can't pretend. Quickly. It's not it's it this is the second time yeah. that this happened. The first time it was not my fault. This time it was totally my fault. What was your fault? I didn't hit the record button. So we were 10 15 minutes in maybe. Five, ten minutes in, and you didn't yeah. even hit record. The only reason why I knew I didn't hit record, I would have let us go longer, is I looked down to just do a quick time check, time, stack, time stamp check, and I was like, oh, snap. It's bad. That's bad. It is bad. I screwed up. You hit your head a lot as a as a, as a child. As a child, yeah. yeah. Why Why are you stuttering if I'm the one that has the like brain Because I've only just finished my first cup of coffee. Okay. So, uh, you messed now, up. I this did. This is the second time you did it with right. Curtis. And, right. People might recall. Yes. You do not get off the hook ever. We're not going to pretend like you didn't do a Dennis. Um, so. It's not you, a good day for you, me. Would you start? Would you like to start again and do the whole? No. Hey, everybody. Welcome to WKRP Montrose. Take two. Take two. Um, again. Okay. All right. Poor our poor guest. We're going to have to jump right to it right after the fact because yeah. So I, today, yeah. We have with us Ryan Eeks of Typhoon Farmer. Hi Ryan. How's it going, guys? <laughs> and and oh, I did it again. Did it again. I did it again. It's on mute. <sighs> we need to employ somebody. I think we do. I th- so um if you're currently looking for a produce a production producer job, honestly, uh, all you have to be is more competent than Dennis. Than and this that guy. is a low bar. It is. It's pretty low. If you can hit a giant record button. Yeah, it's right there. Um yeah. you might you might be able to come and produce this. Uh-huh. Uh, 970-316-3162. My seat has currently become available, I think. So, yeah, I I don't know what to tell you. I'm not on my game today. That was not not a good start. I had a second chance to get it right and still didn't get it right. That's true. Ryan, I'm so grateful that you're still sitting in that seat. (laughs) I am super happy to be here. Um, So It's it's all good. Still super happy to be here. Still super happy to be here. The good news is that the first time around, uh, we kind of messed, I mean, we jumped around a lot and uh, there's normally very little structure to this thing anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The first take was particularly bad. Okay. So we're going to start again and pretend like we know what we're doing. Yeah. That Starting seemed... with Ryan and his, we're going to start with Ryan's <laughs> origin story. Yeah. That seems okay. like a great um, idea. And, and how you ended up in Mo- Well, Where are you from originally? Uh, originally from New Jersey. All right. Uh, mostly East Coast, New Jersey for 30 years, DC for 10. All right. That's that. You're our second guest, Eric Carroll. Second <laughs> one of your friends. Eric Carroll is also from New Jersey. From New Jersey. A couple of Jersey boys. Do I do I need to do I need to insert the joke there? It's not a joke. It feels like it is. Everybody knows now you are on quickly, witness quickly, protection quickly, quickly, from quickly. New Jersey. Come that on. that, yes, 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 that yes, accent yes. is fake. Get it out. All right. All right. Good, good okay. Work. Good work. You can tell how did you guys know each other in New Jersey? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have the pleasure of meeting. Oh, in okay. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. You see, you see, it's not funny. <laughs> wink, wink. So, wait, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> He's laughing. So, how, how did you get here yeah. from New Jersey? Um, I was in construction for about 20 years, and the company I work for, we just kind of moved around a lot. So we were in, um, so we were in DC for 10 years. Went to Austin, Texas for a few years, Baltimore for a few years, and you know, ended up here for the farming. That that's we're, a lot that we're about to talk about. Was it Austin and then back to Baltimore and then Austin. out to Colorado? Yeah. That's wow. a lot of jumping around. That is. Yeah. So um, when did you land in Montrose? How long have you been here? Um, so permanently, we got here in 2020, like right as the uh, pandemic was <laughs> starting. So that was perfect fun. timing. Yeah. yeah. So that's not long. And no. then, I mean, no. so did you end up here then to start with, you got, you got the gig as it were with Typhoon? Well, I should, I should let everybody know that we've been traveling here for 20 years. Right. Um, you know, so we knew we like we knew we loved it here yeah. and we knew yeah. about, we knew the town well, and, um, we knew it was a place we wanted to move our family to and raise our kids. So, um, yeah. So with the farming, like our, our friends have lived here, uh, part-time for, you know, since 1987 basically. Oh, right. 
Um, so we used to come out and visit them all the time. Right. So they live part time here and then part time in Hong Kong. Uh-huh. So when you say so. you keep, you were coming out here to visit, you mm-hmm. were literally coming out to Montrose to visit. Yeah, I mean, you weren't necessarily doing the in the airport up to Telluride, in the airport out to Crest. No, we we were here like when we were visiting. Like my wife and I actually took our honeymoon here in two thousand four. So <laughs> you know we went. Obviously, we did all the traveling around. We mm-hmm. went to Telluride and Ure and everything. But this was our home base. This was the home yeah, base. This was the home base. You might be the first person ever to have honeymooned in Montrose. Montrose. <laughs> No, yeah. I'm not, no, I'm not going to no. say the last. No, it's just. I mean, it's not. It's probably not what most people think of when they think of their honeymoon. And we I have wedding planners here. We have elopement photographers yes. here. People, people come do here. Do not honeymoon in Montrose. I do, I think you're wrong. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So you have yeah long a long history with Montrose, but you've yeah. actually only been here permanently about four years. So and yeah. then so you moved here specifically to be part of Typhoon Farmer. Yes, that's correct. All right, and so, yeah. well, I know you've done this once already, <laughs> yeah. but can you can you tell the people what Typhoon Farmer is? Yeah, so we are a, a hemp farm. Um, we specialize in cannabinoids, and actually, this year we're the largest farm in the state of Colorado for what we do, which is pretty amazing. And you're just outside town, yeah, right? Yep, little old Montrose. Yeah. So the lar- the largest hemp farm in say that again in the state we're the largest cannabinoid farm farm in, in the state. So there's other types of hemp. There's fiber hemp, right? But we're doing cannabinoids specifically. So we're the largest in in the state. So that's this yep. stuff. Yeah, it's, that, that looks you, like. Can you see this properly? Yeah, can I smoke that? No, on the screen. Yeah, can I can see, see it? it. So um, obviously, this looks very much like marijuana mm-hmm. because they are very closely related yep. plants. But this has um, almost practically no THC. Right. Correct. Yeah. So this cannot get you high. No. Um, which is, I think, one of the big misconceptions mm-hmm. about CBD. Um, yeah. And it's primarily a pain reliever, right? Yeah, for most people, it's a pain reliever. It's an anxiety uh, reliever. Uh, you know, it's a sleep aid. So it's a lot of different things to different people. You, you pointed out already, because I use it quite a bit, but inflammation, like yeah. reducing inflammation mm-hmm. is, a, is a huge benefit of it as well. Um, so for all you athletes out there or people that suffer from arthritis and all kinds of different things, CBD is a, is a miracle opportunity yeah. for you. Yeah. We um, can't technically make claims of, about the product, but you know, right. it, there's yeah, a lot why, of anecdotal stories. I know yeah. that that's a, I know that that's a, a, a law yeah. or a rule in, in the production or in the marketing of, or the education of, mm-hmm. um, that's a good question. I'm glad we redid this because I want to ask you that. <laughs> why do you think from as somebody that obviously is educated about it, yeah. why do you think that that's something that the medical industry doesn't it has an influence over and doesn't want you to claim um, those things? Is it just because like if you're not going to pay for a big research study and, and you know, go through that channel, like exactly. then, then you can't talk about it. Correct. Like the only... Uh, so the FDA approved it for a drug called Apedialex. I believe that's how it's pronounced, Apedialex. But um, that has CBD in it, and it's meant to treat uh, people with epileptic seizures. So that's been the only FDA-approved drug. You know, and they've gone through all the trials and, right. you know, spent all the money. So, you know, if you're making, you know, gas station pills, you can't make claims, Right. you know, <laughs> but this isn't this isn't five hour energy. This no, is no. this is something that's been around for a really 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 it's been long time. For a long time, yeah. yeah. And the medicinal efforts, mm-hmm. you know, the medicinal benefits of it have been around as long Correct. as the practical uses. You mentioned, you know, you're not a um, you're not a uh, the, the, the fiber, thread like fiber fiber, fiber farmer yeah. of, mm-hmm. of hemp, but that's been around as long as this country's been you know. Yeah. founded oh this country as, yeah. it's been well, around much longer than well, that. I, I know this it's been a, longer than that nobody cares <laughs> about the other countries oh, God, in this country for some reason before 1776 the world existed good <laughs> not, lord not really so you okay so you said that there's one fda approved drug so does that mean that the industry is you know strong and gaining you know are you can you see five ten years down the line that this is an industry that is going to be just keep getting stronger with more and more products and yes. FDA approved drugs and things like that. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's been the, what everybody's been waiting for in our industry is the FDA to decide how they're going to classify what we grow. Right. You know, whether it's going to be a food ingredient or a supplement, or if it's going to be strictly a pharmaceutical ingredient, right? Cause once they decide that, then the rest becomes clear. Like right now it's very hazy. You right. know, there's, 
and every state kind of regulates it a little bit differently. Yeah. Um, so I was going to say, well, in, in terms of like products that you can produce, mm-hmm. so you also brought these. Yeah. And this is the Isolate. That's right? 100% so that's pure CBD. Just yeah. pure CBD, which is kind of crazy when you think of the plant and it's just a, a white powder. Yep. yep. And then this is an oil. Yeah. That's a full spectrum distillate is what they call that specifically. So I think it's also important. This, I mean, you could just scoop that into a, a, a smoothie, mm-hmm. right? Or something like that. But is yeah. there an amount that is too much? Yes. Um, okay. It's not for me to say what that amount is okay. yet, but, you know, there's there's different schools of thought, you know, like when you go to the store and buy, buy a product, for example, you'll see gummies and it says it has 25 milligrams of CBD per gummy right. or whatever. So there's, there's different companies that are spending money on researching what's effective and what's not effective because right. you may need to take four gummies. Right, right You know, right. if you're a 250-pound, six-foot-four guy... Yeah, you may need to take more. You know, so <laughs> so. Can, but can you buy this? Can can you do you sell this? Yeah, that was going to be my question. Do so you? that I can sell because that has zero THC in it. Right. So people then would be responsible for saying, "Well, I'm going to use um, a small amount, and mm-hmm. I'm going to see how I feel." And, I'm gonna, and you, so you kind of self mm-hmm. uh, dosing, right? You're deciding how much works for mm-hmm. you. Do you yep. produce any products? Like, do you produce any? For example, um, I use a, um, a topical mm-hmm. uh, to put on my joints to help. Do you produce any products like that, or is it just you're, you're in the in the raw form? So we're producing the bulk ingredient. Okay. Right? Um, at some point, we look to get uh, a retail line, but that's down okay. the road. If we do it, we want to make sure we do it right. All right. So, so, so you're producing the raw ingredient and then mm-hmm. selling that to other companies who use it for various things. Yeah. What are some of the companies that you work with? Um, start, so, with start with a really, you know, if there's a really big one that you might want to. So I can tell you our first one. Um, our first one is called Sombra USA. They were our first customer, and they're based in New Mexico, and they've been around for about 40 years. And what they do is they make the hot and cold therapy treatments for physical therapy um, clinics, okay. you know, or for doctors, things like that. So um, they decided they wanted to try they call it a Sombra Plus line. Mm-hmm. And basically what they did was they took their hot and cold therapy and what they did is infuse CBD in it. Um, so they released that, I believe, last, uh, two years ago. Um, so they're they're a great company. Um, like I said, been around for 40 years. Yeah. Have a great product. Um, those are the type of companies we want to work with. Right. Um, mm-hmm. But most of our product actually, believe it or not, is ending up overseas yeah. um, in more regulated markets because the, the U.S. market is still in flux. Um, but you know, in Australia, for example, it's regulated in Brazil, it's regulated. So um, in, a, right. in a regulated market, th- that must mean your processes have been vetted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and so why do, why would people want to like work with Typhoon Pharma versus yeah. maybe another product or another so line? I'm glad you asked that question. Cause that's, that's something we've been working on for a couple of years now. So, um, I'll try and summarize this in, in a way that won't bore the daylights out of everybody that's <laughs> listening. So you know, the companies that we want to work with are going to be companies like a Pepsi or a Nestle or, uh, you know, a, you know, Mars company. Okay. So because they have a global reach. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if you're a Pepsi, for example, and I'm just using Pepsi as an example, if you're a Pepsi and like, say you're producing a, uh, you know, soft drink, a, a soda, when you buy your sugar, you don't just buy your sugar from Walmart. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Like it has to come from a vetted source. Um, because you can't have, you can't, if you're Pepsi, you can't afford to have any perfections or any irregularities right. or whatever yeah. in that process and the bulk product that you're right. Particularly in a soda. Right. Yeah. And every big company yeah. does it right. Yeah. yeah. All big companies do, yeah. you know, and they want to know that the sugar is coming from a farm that has, you know, fair labor practices. That's, um, you know, exhibiting ESG, uh, you know, has ESG goals, you know, yeah. you know, looking down the road into the future, you know, like doing solar, you know, yeah. uh, solar sustainability, all the, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. um, so f- for what we grow, that did not exist. You know, like companies like Pepsi, they're looking at cannabinoid drinks. You know, right. they want to put cannabinoid drinks in, in a product. Uh, they want to put cannabinoids in a product and release it in Australia, for example. Right. But they need to have that stabilized supply chain. Right. So that didn't exist for hemp. So our farm here in Little Montrose, we actually authored the program for that, you know, globally. 
So like the, a set of standards. A set of standards um, that, you know, so a company like Pepsi can have a, a guaranteed and certified supply chain. So, so if so, somebody else wants to grow hemp in another area of the, yep. of the world or the country, they and they want to sell that hemp to, let's say, we keep saying PepsiCo, but let's say yep. Nestle or whoever else. Yeah. Um, they have to they have to adhere to the standards that you yeah. created. Yeah, which includes okay. you know where you source your genetics, how you how you uh, you know apply your nutrient program to the plants, you know, and how you harvest the plants, how you dry the plants, and right. everything that goes into getting the product to what you have in your hand from seed. So you you start with the seeds, and then what you want is what you have in your hand right there. Those isolates are the are the full spectrum distillate. So it's fair to say Typhoon Pharma is literally like leading the world yeah. Yeah. when it comes to yeah. producing um, cannabinoids. Yeah, and I can confidently say that. I mean, I I, I don't normally like to toot my own horn, but we'll toot. toot, toot. That was a, I'm going to toot it because that was a that was <laughs> yeah. a big deal for us. You know, that is That's a huge a, deal. Yeah, it's a huge deal. So how do you go about that? Did you just approach? You know, a company and say, "Hey, we're gonna do. We're gonna be the ones to step up yeah. and 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 author this um, this set of standards." And it, they went, "Okay, we like that." And yeah, it got to the point where you're like, "All right, now we have a set of standards." And they went, "Okay, cool. That's the ones we'll use." Well, so it it came to us actually, you know, through a bunch of network industry network, you know, connections we had, and it all goes back to the owners of our farm and the investors because they're committed to this industry and we decided to stick it out and become the best farmers we possibly could for this product. Right. And people in the industry started to notice it and they, they came to us and they said, look, we love what you guys are doing. Would you consider authoring this program? Because we need oh, wow. farms to be at the same level that you guys are. That's even so better yeah. than you yeah. saying, hey, we're going to do this. It's somebody saying, we need somebody to do this really, really important thing. Yeah. You're the best. Mm -hmm. Can you do it? Yeah. That's pretty amazing. You know what I think yeah. is crazy? is the, the, So there's a section of the world then that knows Montrose. Yeah. Has no idea where it's at. Yeah. Right. Like has no clue. Yeah. But they the, know. There must be global like conferences <laughs> and like, right. you know, um, big, big cannabinoid like events where, you know, industry events where people go, oh, you're the guys from Montrose. Yeah. yeah. Like they don't know where it is. People are talking about Montrose, Colorado. <laughs> yeah. I love well, it. They should come here. We should have, you should have some kind of huge conference here. Yeah, we should. And you know, one thing I'd like to, I'd like to say, and it, I said it in the Wayfinder article that you guys did, you know, a couple years ago. I believe that Montrose is the Napa Valley of hemp. I, I firmly believe that because this valley is so special given the climate, the weather, you know, the, the, the change in temperatures at night, mm -hmm. the, the access to water, um, the light cycles here, it's like everything just supports what we grow perfectly. You know, there's, I think as this industry continues to grow, there's going to be a couple epicenters of, of this product. Yeah. It's going to be, you know, Kentucky where the form, you know, former tobacco farmers, it's going to be Oregon. It's just a really good area to grow up in Oregon too. Yeah. It's a little bit, you know, more damp up there. But, yeah, yeah. And then Montrose. So we will be to hemp what the Napa Valley is to, and Sonoma Valley is to to wine grapes. So it's when you yeah. when you amazing. that is, yeah. but that makes me that makes me think. Since it's not a product that you taste, right? Uh, you can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can taste it. Is there? Is and smell it and smell it. Uh, so, are those the like? So, for example, if we're comparing it to Napa and mm -hmm. wine, yeah, the valleys and the different temperatures and the you know climates and everything like that, mm -hmm. and the, the soil makes for a different tasting grape, yeah, right. And and then those areas have become infamous mm. or famous, yep, uh, for that flavor of grape. You're over there sniffing. It's great. So, can you? I mean, that wasn't even yeah. ASMR. That was like you just did it in the background. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> smell it all right hold on I, but that was but my question is so what would the what would the comparison be is there any like um like a sommelier Smo yeah yes yeah, sommelier, oh, sommelier? <laughs> like yeah. That. you mean sommelier well, well, or you, you sommelier can say it however you like it's but. it's very oh, much wow. like hops too you know it's the the plant is more akin to hops and right, grapes right right and if you think about it I'm sure you guys know the Billy Goat Hops. Yeah, yeah. Like they yeah. just won the Cascade Award. Yeah, they did. The Cascade Cup, right? The Cascade Cup, and which won is more than once. Right? Yeah, and that's that's a huge deal. I love what yeah. they're doing. And it, that's 
you look at what they did. I mean, that's that's attributable to this valley, right? Right. And yeah. what this valley can produce. It's it's. You Do know, you know what the Cascade Cup is? I, I don't know what it basically is. Basically, the best hops okay. in the country. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like the World Cup. Well, not the World Cup. And Billy Goat like, Farm. Billy Goat Farms. They've won it just more. Won? They've won it more than once. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay, so. I, <laughs> can you give that back? to No, me? this is going to be funny. Well, well it's going to be funny to me. Mm-hmm. Is it, it smells? Yeah. It smells. It has the 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 rem, the remembrance. Wow. Uh huh. Of pop of high, of high school, <laughs> of high school. Yeah, maybe more, maybe more recent than that for me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but I mean, it's legal, right? I can. I don't know. It is. It, I think yeah. it smells better, honestly. But and that's what I was like, going to say. It smells. It smells fresher. Yeah, is what it's. It doesn't have that skunky. And no, it doesn't. Well, no. so what we it. grow is is it like to the naked eye, it's it? it's indistinguishable from marijuana. But it's been bred to be low THC. Uh-huh. So these plants technically have under 0.3 THC. Um, that I, that I can't smell as much, but but it did. It, it, that was I was I was kind of s- struck by the fact that it yeah. smelled a little bit like fresher. Yeah, I, I mean you can smoke that just as if you would marijuana, but it it won't get you high. It just it'll relax you. It'll calm mm-hmm. you down. You know, to help with the anxiety things like that. But it's um. Who do you who do you think needs to calm down in Montrose? <laughs> I think there's quite a few people, but I won't get into that. So. <laughs> <laughs> that felt good to me. So, I just wanted to say that. Why, why is that a problem? <clears throat> so a couple of years ago when I came out to the farm mm-hmm. to, to, to speak to you about um, the Wayfinder story. Yeah. I mean, you, I had mentioned a few things about, you know, where you thought it was going. And yeah. you had some other ideas, too, about the farm, if I recall, about at making it a destination. And yeah. you were doing, like, pick your own. Yeah, right. so we've done the pick your own uh, every year. Actually, this is the first year we're not doing it, and the only reason we're not doing it is because our entire crop was pre-sold. Okay, well that's good news, um, which is good news for us. But yeah. it's I, ha- I have a ton of people calling me asking yeah. me if we're going to do it. So, you know what we did? Like we when we set out, um, you know, again our, our investors are amazing people, and they're just you know so forward thinking, and we want to be as transparent as possible. We want to remove the stigma from the plant. Mm. So, you know, we want people to come out. We're an open book, ask questions. You know, we're not these folks that want to shut our gates and keep everybody away. You know, so we yeah. invite, we invited the public to come out. They can just come out and just ask questions. But we also gave them the opportunity to actually buy a plant. Right. And then we taught them how to trim the plant, cure the plant. Um, and so we, we, like last year we had NPR was out, CBS news was out, uh, Denver post came out, did a story. So it really picked up steam. Yeah. Um, I think they read the article in Wayfinder yeah. and decided I think that they, they would too. come out yeah. a couple of years behind <laughs> Wayfinder. You guys were first. That's Just for saying. Sure. Just saying. Yeah, you were first. But that's our favorite event of the year, and I wish I could have done it this year. I'm yeah. going to do everything I can to do it again next year yeah. because it's just so much fun to have people come out and, like, just, they, like, we want to educate. We want to teach people about the plant, and there's nothing to be afraid of with this yeah. plant. So. So, wait, so let, I want to come back to that real quick. But the So the largest... Uh, hemp cam, cannabinoid, cannabinoid yeah. farm on the western slope in the state in the of colorado, state, in the state of colorado mm-hmm. was it its harvest was sold before yeah. it was ever harvested yeah that's okay. the first time that's ever that's, happened that's, that's so a pretty that's, big deal that's going to be a thing for you moving forward yeah. i feel right, that's the so. goal that's always been the goal i mean especially in agriculture like i don't i don't know if you guys remember but back in like 19 there was Probably everywhere you looked, there was hemp all over the place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everywhere. Yeah, it was the thing. So right? it, I think in Colorado alone, there were 80,000 acres just in Colorado. So this year, for what we grow, there's like 495. Wow. So that'll give you an idea of the the constriction and the right. contraction of the industry. It was like, it's kind of like the dot-com bust. Right, like right, right. Bust, you know? But you stuck it out. We stuck it out. Everybody else cut their losses pretty yeah. much. Yes. And decided to do something else. So yeah. how many acres are there now? 495-ish? Total, there's 495 in and what, the state. How many do you have? Uh, so we have 165. Okay. Yeah, this year. So we actually expanded this year. Um, I think we we're the first ones to expand in quite a while, but... Um, and is that something you're going to try to continue to do? And yeah, so you know? this again, because you know, this Valley is so great for what we do yeah. and the fact that we're, so the other thing I'm going to toot my own horn about is that we've had multiple customers tell us our product has been the best they've ever seen and they want us to continue doing what we're doing and they want us to expand. Right. So we want to continue to expand in Montrose and grow more yeah. and get more visibility 
in this area. Um, you know, there's a lot of farms that want to grow it. There's a lot of farms that are set up to grow it, but they just want to be able to make money. Right. So our hope is that, you know, by having these pre-sales and these contracts, we can actually then say to the farmer, like, look, you're actually going to get paid on this. Right. Because all those people in 2019 never got paid. Right. You know, and it was mm-hmm. like, like a lot of people lost everything, you know, but these are farms that converted from like corn to hemp. Right. And then they're like, well, the hemp thing didn't work out. We're going to go back to corn. Like we set up just to do hemp. Like that's all we're ever yeah. going to do. Was it a gamble though? It absolutely was a gamble. Or and you can call it a calculated risk. It was, but, but you know, we, we knew the industry was going to constrict because of and it collapses. I mean, honestly, that's what happened. I mean, it collapsed. I hate to use that word, but mm-hmm. Um, you know, we knew it was going to, it was going to collapse, but we didn't think it was going to collapse as much as it did. Right. Like even in the dot com bust, like that only collapsed maybe 70, 80%. Right. This collapsed like 95%. So were there some yeah. days where you, you thought, uh, we've made a terrible mistake. The, my, my, this was all, <laughs> it was all I, didn't darker any, shade of color. I didn't have any gray four <laughs> years ago. So a lot of sleepless nights, but you know, again, our investors and the farm owners are just so committed to this and they are, they're like, we're going to go through this no matter what. And the, just having that, knowing that in the back of my mind, allowed me to sleep at night. Right. So, and you you wrote it out, and now you wrote of, it out. You're kind of on on yeah. an upward, very much an upward trajectory. Upward trajectory now. for sure. So Absolutely. you said you said the farm is always open to trying to help educate yeah. and, and dispel any fears mm-hmm. uh, that people have about it. Is that still a thing? I mean, is that still a thing in a state that that you know openly embraces you know THC with with you know, the marijuana laws. Well, yeah. the state but embraces the state does. Well, okay. not, I, I, not I, every was, I was getting to that. <laughs> right. I was getting to that. Is the issue, is there any issue being here in Montrose because Montrose uh, doesn't allow marijuana sales well, THC, inside of this? Right, yeah. right. Yeah. I mean, we're not, we're not doing THC. So Montrose No, but I mean, has there been any, like, do you feel like there's been any, like, oh, People are as- associating yeah, it exactly. because they are uneducated about it. I think, you know, in the beginning, in 19, 20, 21, there was a lot of people that gave us a lot of quizzical looks. Yeah. You know, and they, they just didn't understand it. Like, even some of our neighbors to the farm, like, they were scratching their heads, you know, standing there with their arms crossed looking yeah, at what yeah. we were doing. But the more we open up the doors and yep. let people in, they 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 understand what we're doing. And, yeah. and it's been great. And Montrose has been so supportive. The farming community here is amazing. It's just everybody supports everybody and it's just you know yeah you, I mean, you need help you make a phone call yeah. you got help so it's shrinking though right because there's been because yeah. development in the area has mm-hmm. has has taken over a lot of yeah the property that was previously used as farming right? yeah and totally. that continues to kind of shrink a little bit mm-hmm. how, what is the community how does the farming community is that well the for, farming community are also presumably mm-hmm. if land that was farmed is sold to developers right it's sold by the property the, the land well owners, right? i think so some of that is some the, people are cashing out or or deciding that their particular industry is not i feel like the legacy the legacy farms mm-hmm. are a scenario where the kids are just like i'm not doing this yeah spot and on so, and so they're selling it right um, but then how does that, how, does that break down your network a little bit, make you a little bit weaker? Does it strengthen it? Because it's like, Hey, the ones that are continuing to do it or are really, are, are really invested, invested in it. Yeah. yeah I mean, it, 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 the people that want to do it, you know, continue to support us and you know, it's, I haven't seen a ton of farms sell out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, at least not up in the spring Creek area where we are. There's, I mean, there's a lot of people that are committed up there, you know, to stay in the course and. I think over the next, you know, 10, 20 years, we'll probably see more sell out. But it's also <clears throat> it's also a different industry, right? It's a yeah. little bit, I would say, a little bit more exciting. I mean, if you're a peach farmer, you know, you, you kind of got to innovate in some respects too or, or die. But yeah. this is a really exciting global industry and yeah. like you can make stuff that's made into all kinds of products. And this industry is only going to grow. It is. Right? It's just, it's more highly regulated. Right. So it kind of scares some people right. away from it a little bit. Um you know, and then when people that tried it in 19 and 20, like they got burned so badly, mm-hmm. they're like, you know what, we're just not doing that again. We're not, right. we're not going to attempt it. So um, the only way they would do it again is if they said, okay, here's a guaranteed contract, guaranteed right. money. We'll make and that, it and that, for you. Well, and that can happen, right? It does yeah. happen. Yeah. So I, it's a, I don't know. It's really interesting. I'm very curious to see where this goes and, and how yeah. this becomes. 
increasingly part of our daily lives. Yeah. It's, well, there's there's so much to the plant that people just don't know about. Like CBD is the one that's gotten all, all the press over the last five years, but there's probably 120 cannabinoids in the plant. And they're just starting to research them and what they can do for the body. So the way I see it going is eventually they're going to pick the plant apart. Right completely and separate all these different cannabinoids and then they're going to get to a point where they reassemble them for certain right. conditions and ailments to treat those ailments. right so so you could look like an like an old school pharmacy you'd mm-hmm. be like well we'll put half a teaspoon of this cannabinoid and a little bit of this yep. and, and you make up these yeah. bespoke mm-hmm. cannabinoid concoctions treatments yeah <laughs> so but so this plant then yeah so this is pure cbd that's yeah 100 percent pure 100, cbd but, the white stuff so obviously by kind of definition this isn't 100% CBD no. cannabinoid. It has lots of other cannabinoids in it. It does. That actually has a little bit of THC in it, but it's under 0.3. Right. So right, that'll, right. that won't get you high. Okay. So, so if, for, for those of you out there listening, um, I just want to suggest there's a really, really good TED Talk out there talking about cannabinoids mm-hmm. and all of their different effects and Yeah, yeah. Why don't you, why don't you send like people to a different YouTube video? No, I'm just saying. that. The, good the, good the, work. If Click right now yeah, while you're watching yeah. this and go somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> you, you're a smarter business, Dennis. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you're interested in this topic... Because it's really, it's a really fascinating thing. How many, to your point, Ryan, that you were just saying, there's so many different ones and they all have a different effect. Uh, they're learning so much more about it and, and it's relatively new learning that they're doing on it. So, and we, we are, and right we're not the, the resource for that, Rob, although we are. Ryan is the resource if you want the product. Yeah. I don't think, or Ryan, and maybe maybe you are. Are you going to become the destination to teach everybody on what cannabinoids do for the body? I mean, the more I learn about them, the more I'm willing to share. I okay. just, you know, I just don't want to. I don't want to spread misinformation. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And neither do I. Yeah. Um, Rob. I just, so, <laughs> did you write this on the top, or is that just an old top? No, I wrote that on the top. Okay, so, so. this strain is that yeah. the right, that's the right word to use, right? Yep. It's called uh, the cat's meow. Yes, cat's meow. <laughs> I you like, you just like, like that. I like it a little. Is the more cat now. person over there? Yeah, I like yeah. it a bit more now. That was actually an indoor strain that we did. We did a, a greenhouse grow inside. So you should you should rename uh, Winston His Hemp name Hill. Is not Winston? Yeah. <laughs> Carry on. Yeah, Churchill Fed Hemp Hill. Fed you should call him Hemp Hill. I think he'd like that. This is not this is not good podcasting. I feel like it is. Keep going. It's in, I it, you know part of the podcast is just me entertaining myself. Yes, Can Ryan. we get back to Ryan? I am trying to. Please? Okay. You're the one that came with the cat's meow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, Ryan, what's the future? What's the future look like? What, not just for Typhoon Pharma, but for Ryan. Yeah. So, I mean, there, we've got a lot of stuff we're working on in town here. Um, we haven't signed on the dotted line yet, but I'd love to come back at another time and tell you guys what we're working on. But one of one of which is going to be industry changing, and we're going to – put mantras on the map in another way. All right. Um, you know, all tied to the hemp industry. So, okay. you, you know, hopefully I can, I can tell you guys yeah. about that within the next uh, couple months. But so it's fair to say then that yeah. the, um, the company, yeah. I, I assume like the whole, the company that owns Typhoon Pharma is mm-hmm. invested in Montrose clearly yeah. through Typhoon Pharma, but yes. you are investing more and more time of, you know, your life, but also money yeah. in Montrose in other areas yeah. that you're going to come back in a couple of months, maybe, and tell us about it. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, there's some some real estate things we're looking at, and then there's some other industry uh, yeah. things that we're looking at, which will be front page news once once I can announce them. So, yeah, super excited about that. Well, give us the, um, when when that time is due, Yeah, give us the next exclusive. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will. Yeah. Yeah, we don't do front page news anymore. Yeah, we're, we do yeah. podcast exclusive yeah, news. Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> um, but yeah, it's exciting. Uh, I think it's it's super cool that uh, Typhoon Pharma is leading the world. And it's not even yeah. an exaggeration. Yeah. Leading the world in this industry. And you're based right here in Montreal. Yeah, that's the thing that I love about this show is, is the opportunity that we have people come in. And they're our neighbors. But we don't necessarily know everything that they're up to right. yeah. and, and how impactful that is, not only to, to Montrose in a sense, but to the rest of the world. Yeah. So um, I was unaware until you just came in and told me yeah. that there are, you know, major corporations that are producing products with CBD in it in other markets. Mm-hmm. So what you mentioned Australia. Yeah. The fact that I could get a CBD soda in, in Australia maybe is interesting to me and curious as to how long it's going to take us to catch up to that kind of, yeah. type of thing i don't know how long but 
you know, it, it, I'm sure it's down the road somewhere. For we're, sure. all, we're all waiting with bated breath. And, you know, I think the FDA is getting a lot of pressure to make some decisions. But, right. you know, obviously for, for, you know, however many years they were dealing with COVID. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and now we have an election coming up, and it's just it always keeps getting put. There's on always the back burner, some, so there's always, there's always something. something. Yeah, but it'll get there. It'll get there. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, it's and when it does get there, people around <clears throat> well, they can arrive soon, but around the world, we'll be able to have a little taste of Montrose, Colorado, literally yeah. in some yeah. cases. Absolutely. Well, in some ways, they it's already happening. Right? Yeah. So. Awesome. Ryan, thanks for, thanks for coming in. Absolutely. I appreciate thanks it. Thanks for having us. Um, you want to mention the fact that Ryan brought us some lovely hats? Yeah, yeah. We're no. gonna, we'll probably you know give one of those away. I'm keeping one for sure. But, okay. Uh, we have okay, a Rob, more. you can keep one. We'll you guys a, can keep the buds too. We have a so. couple more. Yeah, I'm going to take the cat's meow <laughs> home as well. Um, no, so we'll come up with uh, look look on the look on the post or Facebook, we'll, Facebook yeah. all the uh, socials. Uh, we'll have a chance for you to win a Typhoon Pharma hat for yeah. sure. Um well, right before we let you go, one of the things that we've been doing on the show is uh, giving you an opportunity if you want to call somebody else out to sit on the wheelie nice couch and uh, tell their story. So, is there anybody that you can think of that uh, you want to call out and see be on WKRP in the future? And it can be, it can be, it can be anybody. You know, there's no prerequisite for coming and talking at us. Hmm, that's an interesting one. Well, you can think about it. You don't yeah. have to. We don't have to put you on the spot. Think I, about I like putting people on the spot. I know. Well, I mean, it seems like it would make sense to have the Billy Goat Hops folks. That's ah, true. There you go. I have spoken to Chris and Audrey, and yeah. they, like you, I'm sure they're very busy, like winning stuff, um, <laughs> making this, sh- this, making this, stuff happen in the in the rest yeah, of the world. The weekend after this part, I mean, this podcast will go out. Uh-huh. Um, you know, in a week or two. Uh-huh. So their event will have passed by then, but the weekend, I don't know how to say it, this coming weekend mm-hmm. right now, they are having uh, their Southwest Fresh Fest, which oh, is yeah. a beer and music kind of festival at their, their hop farm um, right outside of town too. I mean, they're so the, the best at what they do in the country yeah, and they're yeah. right here in Montrose too. So. Yeah, everyone who drives past their place has seen it. They may not know it's a hop farm, but yeah. But they're busy. They're super busy as well doing cool stuff. So Mont- they, they're coming on at some point for sure. So there you go. We'll, um, we'll get them on. Montrose. Chris, Chris and Audrey, you've been summoned by... There you go. Right, well, Montrose yeah. kicking ass and taking names That's in the right. uh, in the in the hemp and the it, hops and the, hops and the world, yeah. 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 All right, I like it. Yeah. Well, there you go, Ryan. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. It's thanks been another me. episode of WKRP, even oh. if it had a slow start. Wait, one more thing. Oh no. So it is now again. Oh. This goes out at a different time, but it's still the morning. Yeah. So I'm not drinking beer. This is actually left over. But I just want to give a little shout out to Pomona. Oh. They're kind of our beer sponsor. Um, well, they're not kind of. Well, no, they give us beer when when we can drink it. Yes, uh, we don't typically offer our guests beer at ten a.m. Yeah, well, um, it's not that kind of. But if <laughs> if we did want to drink it at uh-huh. ten a.m., they would give us beer. I'm sure they would. So I didn't and even ask them today because it was a little early. But thanks, Kevin and Chelsea, for supporting us. All right, guys, another episode of WKRP in the can. We'll see you soon, Ryan. Thanks for joining us, Thank Rob. You. I'm just going to turn your mic off. Press the button. Press the button. (laughs) (laughs) All right. You guys have a great afternoon or great evening, wherever it might be, whenever you might be listening to this. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.